<laughs> chapter 4. Chapter 4. All right. Praise God. There's someone here today by the name of Wren. So where's she at? Wren. Hey, God bless you. I heard you was here today. I wanted to meet you. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord today and worshiping God with us, okay? Oh, man, praise the Lord. Amen. We're just getting started, young lady. I tell you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I had eight cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts 4 and verse 13. And it said, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, look at this, and untrained men, they marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. So today I want to talk about characteristics of being with Christ. And uh, so uh, this will be, I didn't plan on this, but it will probably be a two-part, anywhere from a two-part to a 12-part series. <laughs> you know how that goes. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. Amen. Characteristics. <laughs> should, or you all laugh because you know it's true, don't you? <laughs> Characteristics of being with Christ. Praise God. Father, Heavenly Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord, I thank you for the joy that's in this house, the freedom and the liberty that's in this place. Lord, you are present, and folks have come hungry. They have come thirsty. They have come desiring. They have come seeking, not just to have a church service, but they've come to meet with Christ. They've come to see Jesus. So I pray, God, that you just reveal yourself to them, move through them, fill them with the Holy Ghost. I pray in the middle of preaching, people get the Holy Ghost. Middle of worship, people get the Holy Ghost, and just be renewed and revived. Father, make yourself known to them, I pray. And we ask, giving you all glory, asking for the anointing, the unction as we bring glory to Christ and lift up the name of the Lord that you draw all people unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. You know the Lord is doing great things. You know that God is healing, don't you? The Lord is healing. We're getting good reports of, of, of the things that God is doing. So hold on to God and rejoice in, in the Lord. Uh, you've been touched by God. I've been touched by God. You've gotten good reports. I've gotten good reports. And so hang on to Jesus. Amen. All characteristics of being with Christ. You know, there are distinct qualities for those who have had a true life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. Uh, there are a multiplicity of those who have been uh, to church but never had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thousands may be in church today, but thousands that have never known Christ. I used to be one of them. I, I was raised up in church, but until I was 27 years old, I, I didn't, until then, I, I had a life-changing an encounter with Jesus Christ. He changed my life. In fact, on March the 20th, 1992, that was last week, I believe it was last Monday, that was my 31st anniversary of being born again, of being a child of God. Amen. No longer just being religious now, but now saved and washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ. My life completely changed. Church no longer just being a boring duty to get through, but I wanted to go. I became like David that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I loved going to church. No longer my grandmother offering me a quarter to stay awake. I'm awake. No, lo no longer pushing, prying, begging me to go. I'm wanting to go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because now I'm born again. I I'm changed. I I'm hungry for God. I, I was hungry for his presence and hungry for his word. Hungry for fellowship. How many know fellowship is good? Hungry to learn and I had a spiritual appetite for God. I just couldn't wait to see how the Lord would move or what the Lord, would, how he would speak to my heart or, or what he would do at that altar call. I remember at Jimmy Swigert Ministries, always at that altar, always praying, always seeking God. Whether that service sermon per, really pertained to me or got anything out of that or not, I just about every service I did but at that altar. And I loved going to that altar. If for no other reason than the devil hated it. Amen. If for no other reason the devil, I love that altar. If for no other reason that the devil hates it. I just wanted to be with Jesus. I was in church just about every time the church doors were open. I wanted more. I don't know how these churches make it on just one service a week these days. I don't know how they make it. I'm not interested in a little story time. I've come to meet with God and I pray that you've come to meet with God too. I pray that you've come that you might see Jesus and by the grace of God we hope to bring to your attention today the marked distinction of those who have actually 
they've been with Jesus. How many know there's a difference between just being a church goer and one that's had a life changing encounter with Christ? They think you're crazy. They think you're weird. I'm talking about the church out there. They think you're weird jumping up and down and hooping and hollering and, and praising God and shouting the glories of, of God and rejoicing in the Lord. They think we're crazy. They think we're loony. They've never been touched or connected to what we're connected with. God's not dead, but he's alive and he lives inside of our hearts. There is a, there's a, dis, differ, a difference between knowing religion and knowing Christ. Now, in Acts chapter 3, shortly after the resurrection of Jesus, we find Peter and John going to the temple to pray. And just outside the temple gate, or the gate called Beautiful, sat a poor beggar who had been crippled from birth. In fact, he had been crippled for 40 years. And this man had never walked a step in his life. Each day, he had to be carried to the gate to, be, to make his living by begging and by pleading uh, 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 money to, so he can make it. Brother John, turn me up just a little bit more, please, uh, or the monitors here at least. Uh, and when the beggar saw Peter and John, uh, he asked them for alms or for money. And Peter answered by saying, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. I see that in verse 6. Uh, Peter then took the man up by the right hand and lifted him up. And I, and you think about that. And I said, I wonder where Peter learned that from. Uh, to pick him up by the right hand. He, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Picked him up by the right hand. Hallelujah. And he was healed. I look over in Mark chapter 9. And there was a demon-possessed boy. And there Jesus cast that devil out of him. And he was delivered. And the Bible said that Jesus picked him up by the hand. Aha. Uh -huh. Peter learned from Jesus how to do this. No better person to learn from than Jesus himself of how to live this life. I don't want your dead, dusty theology. I want to learn from Christ. I want to learn from God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And so Peter took him up by the right hand. And, uh, and immediately he, the man was healed and his feet and ankle bones received strength. And the man got up walking, leaping, and he's praising God. A divine miracle had taken place. A man's life was changed by the power of God. No doubt uh, he was telling everybody that Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. I know he went into the temple with John, with Peter and John, and he's, Jesus healed me. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Oh, pastor, how do you know he would do that? Oh, listen to me. If God touched you, if God healed you, you would be doing the same thing. <laughs> Everyone in that temple marveled at the sight. And they recognized the man as the cripple who had been begging at the gate for years. Now, when Peter and John saw the crowds gathering, they took the opportunity and began preaching Christ. And they spoke boldly, and they urged the people to repent and be converted so that they may be forgiven, and thousands were saved. The Bible says, however, many of those who heard the word believed. The word believed means that they had faith in Christ. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And I wish that people would be that receptive today. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I do. That you could preach on the street corner. And that, that hundreds would come to Christ just because they're hungry for the Lord. Well, while Peter and John were preaching, guess what? The synagogue rulers were greatly disturbed that they were teaching in the name of Jesus and especially preaching that Jesus had resurrected from the dead and the Sadducees and the religious rulers were mad that God had performed a miracle through Jesus' disciples and they responded by throwing Peter and John in jail nice people I mean you got to watch out for them religious folks <laughs> isn't that the truth I mean Lord have mercy I mean, these are nice folks, and so they, they threw them in jail. And the next day, they, they, they put the two disciples on trial, and every religious authority in Jerusalem was present. These high-ranking officials and mighty religious men asked Peter and John, by what power or by what name have you done this? And they're not saying it with a smile, you know. I mean, listen, you know who were there? Get this. This, this got thing all stirred up. The rulers, the elders, the scribes, Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, 
and uh, someone named John and Alexander. And all kinds of people were there. My goodness, Peter and John, they got things stirred up. Lord, have mercy. I pray that happens in Marion. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let it happen here. All stirred up. Now, these religious rulers are not happy that this man was healed. They're not excited that God had done something wonderful in a crippled man's life. And they're mad because Peter and John preached Jesus. And I have dealt with people like this. They're not happy because somebody got saved. I remember at this church, somebody left this church because somebody got saved at this church and God began, began to use them in the ministry. Imagine that. God saved them. They said, well, they used to be and they were this and they were that. I don't care what they were. Look at them now, saved and redeemed and cleansed and washed. They left the church, this church. And I helped him. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I can't even imagine, think, I, cannot, I can't fathom that a born-again Christian would think that way. Listen to me. You, 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 whether, you, whether, whether your life was a mess or not, without Christ, you're a mess. You're a mess. You're a mess without Jesus. You're a sinner. You're lost without God. Doesn't matter whatever kind of life or past that you had. You need to be cleansed and washed just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and anybody else. People don't get mad because you go to church. No, no, no. They, they, they don't mind you being religious, but once you begin to proclaim Christ, once you begin to talk about Jesus and proclaim Jesus and sing about Jesus and lift up the name of Jesus and share Jesus. Once you begin to talk about the resurrected Christ, all of a sudden, they get all disturbed. The word disturbed means that they get all distraught. It means they're, they're grieved. The religious are worried. And they don't mind you being religious. Just don't talk about Jesus. Oh, by the way, by what name or power did you do this? Now, listen, we're, we're not... I, 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 yeah. We're not one of those community churches that, that never talks about Jesus. I've been to those kinds of churches before. They don't talk about Jesus. They never mention the name Jesus, never mention the cross, never mention the blood. Nothing, nothing, nothing like that in that church. Not at all. Listen, we are a church. And I, I, I listen, I just real quick, I want you to know what kind of church we are. We are a church that lifts up the name of Jesus. We are a church that proclaims the name of Jesus. We are a church that worships Jesus. We are a church that praise in the name of Jesus. We're a church that only talks about Jesus, but we have been with Jesus. And there is a difference. There's a difference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I mean, you can have all the religious hierarchy that you want. You can have all your dead religious artifacts and relics and light your candles and count your beads and recite your redundant prayers. Amen. You can have all your dead doctorate degrees, but as for me, give me Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to be in his presence. I want to be with Jesus. As Moses said, show me your glory. I want more. I, 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 I don't want to settle for less. I want more. Now, these religious men ask, by what power or by what name have you done this? What a silly question to ask. These men knew exactly uh, where uh, what name they had been preaching in. A, a crippled man just got healed, uh, jumping, leaping, praising God. Uh, they just saw 5,000 people confessing their sins, uh, calling on Jesus uh, to cleanse and to save them. Don't play dumb with me. You know we've been preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No other name in which one can be saved but the name of Jesus. That's it. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes unto me, unto the Father, except by me. Hallelujah. Now, these rulers had to know that there's power in the name of Jesus. But they purposely blinded themselves to the truth. They were so full of themselves and so full of pride that they couldn't see the truth. And they didn't want to see the truth. And, and so they were so stuck in their, their, their religious ways that they missed God. And suddenly Peter was emboldened by the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. And he answered the ruler saying this. Now he's on trial, right? All the religious. And you know that spirit that's in there. Oh, yeah. He says that by... Listen, 
listen to this. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. My God, do you see the theology in that verse? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the way, don't get confused, who, whom you crucified, by the way. God raised them up. There's the resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection. You see it? By him, this man stands here before you whole. So there's, there, here we see the death, burial, resurrection, and we see the power of God healing and manifesting himself in one verse. The Holy Ghost can say so much in a few words. It takes me four messages to say that. You know what I'm talking about? But, but God can say it. Now then Peter said, nor is there salvation. He's on a roll now, see. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It, Peter just lets it all out. He doesn't hold anything back. At this point, it's all or nothing. And Peter's probably thinking, if they kill me or if I die, I'm going down preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to preach Christ. I'm going to preach Jesus. That's what I'm doing. The synagogue and the religious hierarchy and the rulers, man, they were stunned. They're like, whoa. And, and the scripture says they marveled. It means admired them. And they realized or they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. Now, isn't that, isn't that interesting? The word realized or the word took knowledge comes from the root word meaning this, known by some distinguishing mark. Some power had taken hold of Peter and John, and it was so evident and obvious that it distinguished them from everybody else that appeared in that courtroom. This power was so obvious and clear to them that they couldn't say anything against it. They were dumbfounded. They were like, whoa. They're like, man, this guy's got it. The power and the authority and what he is saying. And so what was the mark that distinguished Peter and John? It was the presence of Jesus. They had the likeness and the spirit of Christ. Those synagogue rulers realized that although they crucified Jesus, he's still speaking today. You can't stop Jesus. I said you cannot stop Jesus. And he's still doing miracles. And he's still moving upon the hearts of people. And he's still saving lives. And he's doing it through these unlearned and uneducated men, so they thought. But listen, these two men, these, these fishermen, these nobodies, knew more about God. <laughs> they knew more about God than all the rabbinical schools could tell you. They knew more about the Lord. Peter and John, there's a difference between just book knowledge and encounter. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I mean, it's like, it's like somebody coming out of four years of college trying to tell somebody that's been on the job for three and a half years how to do his job. And it's like, you don't know what's out here. You don't know how to do this job. You just have book knowledge. I have life knowledge. I have experience. These disciples uh, had an encounter and an experience uh, with Jesus. Amen. Peter and John were fulfilling Jesus' command to testify of him beginning in Jerusalem. And you see, they were witnessing through God's presence in their lives. In the same way, I believe this will be God's per po powerful witness in these last days. It won't come through just preaching alone. Although preaching is of utmost priority, but it'll come also through men and women who have been with Jesus. Through those who have shut themselves up with God, spending time in his presence, seeking him with all their heart and soul. The Holy Spirit will distinguish such servants with his power today. And the world will say of them, man, they have been with Jesus. There's something different about them. There's something different about that church. Something different about you. Something different. Oh, yeah. Though These are not ordinary people. These people are radical. These people are crazy. These people love the Lord. These people rejoice. They sing. They pray. They seek. They cry out to God. They're witnessing. They proclaim the gospel. Not only do we need to preach Jesus like Peter and John did, but also we must show them Jesus like Peter and John did. We've got to Show them Christ by love and action. Show them with your life. Show them Christ in you. Amen. 
believe me, I'm in my office in the mornings, and I'm telling myself, now, Mark, don't get so excited, don't get so loud, teach it, just teach it, and it's hard, everybody's different, but I tell you, man, I, t I feel, when you say it feels like fire shut up in your bones, it does feel like fire shut up in my bones. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. He's alive. He's real. He's real. He's alive. Oh, he's alive again. Stone's been rolled away. He's alive again. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> Miss Faith, God bless you. I see you back over there. She tried to slip in here and sneak in without me knowing it, didn't she? <laughs> Glory to God. It's just good to have you folks. All right, now let me give you several distinguishing marks of those who had been with Jesus, okay? Now, I'm only going to give you one today. I got like four or five points. I can only give you one today, all right? Number one, let's get a hold of this one here. They hunger for a greater measure of Christ. People that have been with Jesus hunger for a greater measure of Christ. Truth be told, those who spend time with Jesus can't get enough of him. Isn't that the truth? You spend, you want, you got a touch from God and you want more. Hallelujah. Hey, God touches you. God fills you with the Holy Ghost. God heals you. God saves you. God delivers you. Delivers you. God revives you. God renews you. God refills you. You just want more. That's the truth. That's a mark. You want more. Uh, their hearts continually cry out to know him better and to draw closer to him. They want to grow in the grace and knowledge of his ways. And they have the heart of the psalmist that says this. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. And then he says this. Teach me. Give me understanding. Make me walk in the paths. For I delight in it. And the word delight there in, in Psalm 30, uh, 19, it means great pleasure. I have great pleasure in God. I have great pleasure in, in the word. Uh, it means joy. It means satisfaction. Nothing else satisfies. The world doesn't satisfy. Temporary things don't satisfy. Material things don't satisfy. Only Jesus satisfies. When you go to heaven, you're not taking anything of this world with you. You're only taking your soul. Only thing that can satisfy. Oh, is Jesus Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, it's everything to me. It's in him we live and move and have our being. And when you've been with Christ, you want more of God. Do you see it? This psalmist has a spiritual hunger and hunger pains. He yearns and he hungers and he desires and he delights. He wants to know God and to live for God and to be obedient to God. Look at Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. It didn't say it thirst for things. I don't thirst for things. I thirst for God, for the Lord, like a deer that's thirsty for the panther brook. Well, the water brooks. I am thirsty for God. Oh, would this psalmist be in Sunday school? Would he go to Sunday morning worship? Would he go to Sunday evening worship? Would he go to midweek service? Would he go to a men's Bible study? Do you think that he'd take the time? Oh, you know, folks will say, well, I can't get a ride. Then get one. Get one. I ask somebody, show determination. Can't get a ride. Where is your faith? Why aren't you asking the Lord? God will make sure. Hallelujah. Somebody help me out here. God will give you. God will give you the faith. That's what Peter was talking about when he prayed for this lame man to the gate called beautiful. God gave him the faith. Peter, you can look at that. I'll, I'll show you that another time, another message. But the fact is this. You know, the, the people were looking like the Peter and John had the power, like they were the ones. No, 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 no. No, he said, Jesus, it's our faith in Jesus. But not only that, but Jesus gave us the faith for this man to be healed. My God, I pray that God would give you and I the faith to pray for one another, to pray for the sick, to pray for the hurting, to pray for the lost. God help us, Lord. As the disciples had said, Lord, strengthen our faith. Do you ever pray for that? God, strengthen our faith. All right. Now, now Paul said, Paul said, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, God has given every one of us a measure of faith according to Romans 12, 3. So what is the measure that Paul is talking about? Well, it means a, a limited amount. And in other words, we've all received a certain amount of saving knowledge of Christ. 
And for some, this initial measure is all they ever desire. They, they want just enough of Jesus to escape judgment. They want just enough to, to, to feel forgiven or, or to keep a good reputation or, or to endure an hour of church on a Sunday. They, they, that's all they want. Now, these kinds of people are in what we call maintenance mode. And these kind of people, they're, they're high maintenance and they're low impact. Now, now, what we need today are low maintenance and high impact. Okay? Now, now they, 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 and they give Jesus only the bare requirements, just church attendance. They might mutter a prayer from time to time, a quick glance at the scriptures. In short, these Christians avoid getting too close to Jesus. Uh, they know if they read uh, much of his word or, or spend any time praying, the Holy Ghost will make demands on their lives. Uh, and one thing they don't want to change is their lifestyle. In their minds, getting to know Jesus puts everything they value, they value at risk. And they don't want to risk giving up anything more for God. I've given up enough of God for God. I've given up of, enough of my time. I've given him enough of my talents. I've given him enough of my money. Don't you understand? Bible said you're not your own. You're bought at a price. You don't belong to you. You belong to God. That's the Bible. Well, if you didn't shout at the first half, you're not going to shout in the second half. I'll tell you that. All right. Remember, remember I told you how I go. Remember that? Well, this is, okay. And Paul desired something for every believer. Now, look at this. Paul said, and he gave himself, himself gave, himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, evangelists, some pastors, teachers. Then it says, for what? The equipping of the saints or for the church, for, for the purpose now, for what? The work of the ministry. There's a purpose of that. For the edifying of the body of Christ, so that to strengthen the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith in the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. So we're talking about maturity in Christ to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now we're talking about Christ's likeness. So, so there's growth and development and change, 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 change until we come to the place of Christ's likeness or the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children, okay, not babies, children, high maintenance people. Y'all mad. I can tell y'all mad at me already. Because I, I can just hear it. I can feel it. You're, it, it I, you're sitting in your chair, right? And you're thinking, is he talking about me? Is he talking about me? No. No. Quit doing that. I'm just, I'm just, just preaching. And, 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 if, and the word will fall where it falls. And you do with it whatever God says do with it. Okay? That's it. That's it. All right? So, <laughs> so. Tossed to and fro, carried about every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness, the deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up. <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, and I was like growing up, like I was like, like 14, 15, 16 years old, and I would do stupid things. I know you never did. <laughs> Tom, I know you, you never did, I know. But I did stupid things, okay? Like, like in Ventura, California, Preble Street, putting a firecracker in an orange. And timing it so that when a car went by, we would, my friend and I, Jimmy Siler, we would light the firecracker. He would light it. I would throw it. And hopefully it would explode right on top of the car. That was dumb. That was dumb. That was really dumb. And so my, my mom or my dad would say, you know, would you grow up? You're, you're not a little kid anymore. You're 14. Start acting your age. So then you're like, what does 14 act like? <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> Listen, men, we don't change. You know what I'm saying? I mean, whether we're 40, 50, 60, 70, at heart, we're still 14. You know that? It's like that, isn't it? <laughs> men are just children that got older. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> okay, so, so what is Paul saying here? So, so Paul is saying that the Lord has given these spiritual gifts so that you may be filled with the Spirit of God. This is crucial because deceivers are coming to rob you of your faith. They're trying to pull you out of the truth. And if you're rooted in Christ and maturing in him, no deceptive doctrine will ever persuade you. 
The only way to grow to such maturity is by wanting more of Christ. you got to want more. And to be honest with you, not every Christian desires to attain this kind of maturity. Many believers prefer a gospel that speaks only of grace and love and mercy. Don't get me wrong. Of course, God is a God of grace, love, and mercy and forgiveness. But he also is this, a God of correction. Isn't that right? He's a God of judgment. And all sin will not under the blood will be judged. It's important that we preach what? A balanced message, not just one slice of the loaf, but the whole loaf, right? The whole loaf of bread. Now, according to Paul, it's not only the milk that we need. I like milk. Anybody here like milk? I like milk. Nobody else likes milk? Oh, man. How many of y'all like milk with ice in it? Oh, come on. <laughs> Good to see you this morning. God bless you. I like milk from cow. <laughs> How many like goat's milk? All right. We got the same like-mindedness, okay. So, so, so according to Paul, it's not only the milk that we need, but also the meat of the word that a mature life requires. Now, listen, we need to launch out into the deep. The word of God should be the highest priority in your life, and the problem is it's not. Preaching like I'm doing right now, some, for some folks it's not important. It doesn't matter. Take it or leave it. It's really not that important, but it is important. You cannot grow and develop and mature without it. Your little five-minute devotions are good, but they won't cut it. We need to put everything else aside and make room for God and his word in our lives. Listen, Colossians 3 and 16. Let me, let me try to teach a little bit here. Colossians 3, 16. Let, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. You see that there? Let the word of Christ dwell in you, it says, in all wisdom. The word richly in the Greek, I'm not going to tell you the Greek word. Most people are not interested. Some are. Richly in the Greek means this, abundantly, abundantly, okay? Let the word of Christ abundantly dwell in you, or let the dwell in you abundantly in all wisdom. Uh, the, word, the word dwell in the Greek means to what? To inhabit, or it means to be at home. Okay? In other words, Jesus, make yourself at home in my heart. Have your way. Do whatever you want to do. That, that's the idea there. Okay? So, so it's like when you have a family member or a friend that you trust, and they come, they're passing by, they're traveling, and they come, and they visit you, and they stay at your house. And you show them where everything is. You say, here's the refrigerator. Here's the pantry. Uh, here's how you, you, you do the remotes, and this is how you work the TV, and there's the bathrooms, and, 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 and here's everything, right? And, and you just tell them, you say, now, i got to go to work. You just make yourself at home. Huh? You do that? We say that because what's ours is theirs, and we trust them. And that's how it should be for God in our lives. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And the meaning of the command is this. The Christian message must be an integral and permanent living force in you, not just outward performance or routine activities. And this is why it's so important that we examine our hearts to make sure that we are in the faith. It's so easy to become fake and hypocritical and mechanical and religious without relationship. God cares about what you do, but he also cares about who you are. God cares about who you are. God cares about who you are. I said God cares about who you are. Matthew 7 and 21. Now, this is a startling passage of Scripture. It's, this, is, this is disturbing. Matthew 7, 21. Jesus said this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice that. Not everybody. Not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. There are people that will say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is wonderful. But they're not going to make it to heaven. Jesus said that. I didn't make it up. Look at it in your word in the Bible. Look at that. He says, but who does? Who makes it? He says, but he who what? Does the will of my Father in heaven. Those that obey the word. How can you obey the word Fully without making Jesus Lord of your life. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not, now look at this. Well, wait a minute, God. <laughs> have we not prophesied in your name? Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus, they have prophesied. In the name of Jesus, he says, as he says in your name, he says, cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare this. Jesus said, I'll declare to them, I never knew you. He didn't say I knew you one time, but now I don't. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness or sin or iniquity. You're a sinner. In other words, you're just going through the motions. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But you do not know him. You're not saved. 
These are people that performed and prophesied. They even performed miracles, cast out demons, did wonders in the name of Jesus. But they were not a Christian. They're not saved. Perhaps they're churchgoers, but they're, they weren't saved. They had all the looks on the outside, but they were sinners on the inside. And it's like today, I'm, I'm disturbed, not in a religious way, but I see these churches popping up everywhere, boop, 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 everywhere, multi-million dollar buildings. And uh, I'm like, where'd they get the money for this? Multi-million dollar buildings going down to Columbus, multi-million dollar buildings. I'm like, man, prime property right on 23. And, and so I, I look them up and it's activity, 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 activity. There's no anointing. There's no power. There's no conviction. There's no altar. There's nothing. And I see that they're going, people can go through the motions of being religious, but they never knew him. And we have churches. Jesus says, he says, you worship a God you don't know. He says, we know who we worship. Now, I don't know about you, but I know who I worship. I know who's my savior. I know who's my deliverer. I know who's my redeemer. I know God. I know the Lord. He has changed me. Yeah. Now, no. Look at, look, at, look at the latest in church in Revelation 3, 16. Look at verse 15. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. Man, God, Jesus said, at least I wish you were cold or hot. He says, so then, because you are lukewarm, that means you don't know that you are lukewarm. Now, I want you to ask yourself a question. Am I lukewarm to yourself? I, 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 am I lukewarm? Am I, let's be honest, am I lukewarm in my relationship with God? Am I doing all that I know I can do? Am I giving my best? Am I worshiping my best? Am I praising my best? Am I tithing my best? Am I faithful in the house of worship my best? Am I, am I, am I, am I faithful in my prayer life? Now, folks, you all feel that. I feel it too. I feel it too. You cannot read the Bible without the Holy Ghost dealing with your heart. Anywhere in the Bible, I read this, and I'm like, Whew. I mean, man, Lord, are you talking to me? There was one time I was in my office, and I was, man, I was behind on my taxes. And I owed, I owed the city taxes, and I was just behind. I didn't have any money. I gotta pay taxes. It's like four or five hundred bucks. And I don't have four or five hundred bucks. I'm broke, broke, broke. You know what I'm talking about? It's like I owe the dollar a dollar. You know what I'm saying? I'm broke. <laughs> and uh, I read this scripture and it talked about when he said there's gonna be a time when Jesus said, well, they're gonna persecute you, they're gonna put you in jail, prison. <laughs> I came across that. I thought, oh man, God, the Holy Ghost talking to me. I said, I gotta find five hundred bucks quick. <laughs> so I robbed a bank. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. <laughs> Man, I said, I got to get this off my chest, you know. What I'm saying, I'm saying the Holy Spirit will talk, will talk to us. He will deal with us. No, he says this. He says, he says I will vomit you. He said, because neither, you, you're neither cold or hot. He said, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say, now this is the church. I am rich. This is the church. This is the church. And they said, have become wealthy and have need of nothing. I don't need anything. I'm comfortable. Everything's good. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked, spiritually. Je Jesus says, you're caught wanting. You, you have all the goods on the outside. You go through performance. You say, you say wonderful things, and you say praise God and hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus, and your worship looks impeccable, but you're dead. You're lukewarm. Jesus knocks, desiring to come in and to commune with you, to sup with you, to have a relationship with you. It's not what you do. It's who you are. The world is full of religious people who get involved in all kinds of community services, but they don't know God. You can work your fingers to the bone, but that doesn't get you to heaven. I work for the Lord not to get saved, but because I am saved. That's not legalism. That's grace. There's a difference. Colossians 3.16 says, dwell in you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. In other words, it must influence how you live with one another. It must determine how you behave toward one another. We are to live it out. If the gospel is accepted into our hearts, then it will be lived out in how we treat each other in the faith. Fruit will come popping out of your life. Love and joy and peace and, and patience. 
long-suffering, self-control. All this stuff comes popping out of your life. And it's just splattering on everybody else. The, the gifts of the Spirit. Because the Word of God is able to have its way in your life, in your heart, in your home, in your business, in your ministry, in everything. Make yourself at home. When my kids, they have a key to my house. My kids have a key to my house. All, all three kids have a key to the house. And, uh, and so they can come. I said, you can come any time. And you know where the fridge is. You know where the pantry is. You know where the food is. I just, I just make yourself at home. I don't have to be there. What are you talking about? Well, well number one, I trust them. Number two, we're blood. <laughs> now, when, <laughs> if you're covered by the blood and you belong to Christ and, and you're in him and he's in you and he's in the father, God, you can have your way in my life, in my home, in my marriage. You can have your way, have your way, have your way. Make yourself at home, Jesus. And if Jesus says, change this, you change it. If you're watching something on the television or the cable and Jesus says, change that, you change it. On YouTube? Hmm? On, uh, what else is there? TikTok? TikTok. 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 And, and you know what the thing is? I, I, I thank God for the, year, the, the age I grew up. Tom, thank God. The age we, we were, we're close to the same age. He's better looking. <laughs> I didn't hear any rebuttal from the church. So I, <laughs> I, I'm feeling pretty low and I'm trying to build myself up right now. <laughs> guys are killing me. All right. All right. Thank God for my wife, right? Y'all come because my wife, right? You love her. And so, and so, um, but the fact is, 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 is that, uh, now, it's, I forgot my thought. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. All right, I, I forgot my thought there. What was it? What was I saying? Yeah, have your way. Whatever that is, <laughs> have your way. Do whatever you desire. Whatever you, oh, yeah, change. If, if you want to change, and I, oh, yeah, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank God you're here today. See, the Lord sent you here for a purpose. Okay, so now when we were growing up as kids, we didn't have we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have, and th th there's good and there, there's good and bad in it. The fact is, that I love the fact you have maps. I love the fact you can Google and find things and restaurants and 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 you could all things time and phone and, and and just all that. It's a smartphone. It's everything. But what disturbs me is that all the filth and the trash is at your fingertips. Also, there's there's no regulations. There are no regulations. There are no regulations. When I was growing up, there were regulations with things, okay? But, but today, there are no regulations whatsoever, and it's destroying our generation. It's destroying our children. You can see it. And, uh, the, the, when they get into the 6th, uh, 7th, uh, and 8th grade, from that point on, and they have access to all this garbage and filth, it's unbelievable. But it's destroying them today. And I thank the Lord that I grew up in a time when we didn't have access to things like that, okay? So it's harder in some sense for a Christian, because I know the devil's going to try to cause you to fall or to fail or to go into looking at things like that. Even if you're not looking for it, it comes looking for you. So you have to be careful. You have to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You got to stay prayed up and you got to make sure that your eyes will only see what Jesus wants them to see and your ears will only hear what Jesus wants them to hear. Amen. And you'll only go to places where Jesus is comfortable for you to go to that place. Amen. Praise God. All right. All right. So how can we grow to full stature in Christ if we refuse to hear the gospel that provokes us to seek the Lord and to walk in his ways? Some run from conviction. Conviction is the Holy Ghost dealing with our hearts, drawing us to Christ, leading us in the ways of the Lord, revealing areas in our lives that need either repentance or changing. It's like your car that gets out of alignment, and the Holy Ghost says, we got to bring that baby back into alignment so that you are driving straight and living and walking in righteousness. It's the will of God for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. And the Holy Ghost will convict and deal with every area of our life that is not conformed to Christ. In fact, the closer you are to God in your relationship, the more the Holy Ghost will convict you over the smallest things. We should embrace it and allow the Lord to have his way, whatever the cost. The book of Hebrews gives us a tough rebuke. And it says this, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you, again, the first principles of the oracles of God. It's like you got to start over. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. 
For everyone who partakes only of milk, only of milk, is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. That means you're immature. If all you are is sucking on the bottle, you're immature. That little baby right there, Rhett, where's Rhett at? Is Rhett there? Rhett, 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 Rhett's right there? He is there. He's down, down, oh, downstairs. Downstairs. Where's Rhett? What? <laughs> but you know what he's doing? He's drinking milk. But he's not going to drink milk all his life. There's going to come a time when he's going to learn that there are things called french fries and tater tots. And he's going to learn what a hot dog is and hamburger. And he's going he's to like, you know what? It, the milk was good for a time and for a season. It helped me to grow. But you know what, Mama? I don't need the bottle anymore. Give me a steak. Give me a hamburger. Give me a Big Mac. The church, what, what, what am I saying? He's hungry for more of what his mom and dad can give him. The dad says, hold up. That costs a lot of money. He says, but dad, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. And if the church can have hunger pains like that and say, pastor, preach me something in the word. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. One guy, he didn't last, but he came up and he said, he said, man. He said, I, I, I didn't come to church last Sunday. I went to a different church. You know, he said, he said I had had something, you know. I, I had, I was, I had, he said, I had had some milk. He said, he said, here, your church? He said, man, it's, 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 it's meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes. I said, well, buddy, you're not on the bottle anymore, you know. So we thought. He said, look at this, but, but solid food belongs to those, the Big Mac, the steak, potatoes, <laughs> the, st the stuffed baked potato with butter, sour cream, salt and pepper, cheese, bacon. All right, we're concluding now. Lord, <laughs> doesn't that sound good? See what, you, see what people are missing out on? They're over there drinking a, milk, a bottle of milk. <laughs> I like milk. But man, you, and that's good, but I'm hungry. And I want, I want that. What you got there? My wife and I, we do this all the time. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. I'll, I'll quit tomorrow. I'll quit tomorrow. My wife, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at ordering. When I go to a restaurant, I usually order the same thing. Because, because my wife, she'll, she'll like, we'll go to a restaurant, and she'll order something. And I'm like, well, she'll get that, right? And I'm like, I'll get, I'll order something different. And whatever she orders, it's always better than mine. It's always better. How do you ladies do that? And then I say, I, I wish I'd have got what you got. And then I say, can I have a bite? I'll say, hey, I got, you want some of this? I'll give you this. For, she says, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You know what the day they say, I'm good? I'm good means this. Leave me alone, right? <laughs> it says, those that are maturity have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The writers say this, you have sat under good teaching and preaching for a long time. By now, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet after all these years, you're in the same place as on the day you got saved. You know nothing of the meat of God's word. You're still immature, not fully grown in Christ. High maintenance, low impact. There are Christians that are so unfaithful that they can't be used in the ministry of God because they have no stability. Whether I feel good or not, I need to be faithful to God. You came today expecting your pastor to preach to you the word. You came today expecting Abby to lead us in worship. You came today expecting your Sunday school teacher to lead you in the word of God and to teach you. It's sad that so many Christians fall for every spiritual fad that comes these days. They're easily led astray. They chase after foolishness. They fall into false doctrine. They go back into law and legalism. That's the problem with this, the platforms we have today. Everybody has a voice, and a lot of voices are bad. But a mature believer in Christ isn't so easily removed from his place in the Word of God. They know God. They know what they believe. They are founded upon the Word of God. They have discernment because they spend time in prayer. They spend time in the Word. They spend time in His presence. They spend time in corporate worship and in fellowship. They hear the preaching of God's Word. They, you find them at the altar seeking the face of God. Their hearts are hungry for the true, authentic, genuine Word of God. They want the true gospel, not the gospel of accommodation. They want the gospel that speaks to their hearts and changes them. They want to grow and develop into full maturity in Christ so that God can use them and touch them and impact the world around them. There's a difference between those that have been with Jesus and those that just go to church. Amen. All right, I'm, I'm almost done. 
we see this happening with the disciples. Now look what's happening. At first they knew nothing. And then for the next three and a half years, Jesus taught them. And he showed them how to live the Christian life by example. He ministered the word of God to them. They were empowered by the Holy Ghost. And now God used them to carry out the Great Commission, sp spreading the, go the good news, ministering the gospel, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, sharing the faith. That's what they're doing. And they're getting locked up because of it. So, so much the fact that the religious rulers knew that not only were these men followers of Christ, but they knew they had been with Jesus. I want to be so close to Jesus that people know it. They will see Jesus in me. They will hear Jesus through me. They will feel Jesus around me. That's what I want. There are times that I've had people come up to me after a service. And they'll say, Pastor, it's obvious that you spend much time in prayer. Now, I didn't go around saying, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. everybody, I've been praying. All. I didn't do that. I, 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 I don't, I, I, I spent 14 hours in prayer yesterday. I, didn't, I don't do that. They said, it's obvious. You don't have to tell them. You've got to show them. You don't have to tell them. They'll see it. They'll see Christ. They'll, they'll sense the depth, the depth of your relationship with God. I'll see it. Now, I, I, everybody's at different levels in their relationship with the Lord. Don't, don't, I'm not knocking that. I know that. We're growing and developing at our own pace. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay? So I, I realize the sanctifying, pro, sanctifying, process, sanctifying process of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, but, but I pray that, that you're hungry. You know, Mary, Mary and Martha welcome Jesus into their house. Well, the story there. And uh, Mary wanted to be near Jesus, and she wanted, she wanted to hear Jesus, and she listened to the teacher. He listened, they listened to him teach, and she was at the feet of Jesus in his presence and listening to the word. Jesus is here, and this is the time and opportunity. I want to hear the word. Martha, listen to this. Now, this, 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 this is going to hit us because it hit me. Are you ready? Martha was so near Jesus, yet far from him. Martha was near Jesus, yet far from him. That's the church. We're caught up in busyness, but not caught up in him. Now, if you would come, Abby, as I close. And because the disciples had been with Jesus, they impacted the world around them. Now, I want you to get this. You want to make a difference? You want to make an impact? You got you to you be with Jesus. You got to be with the Lord. And, and that's what it's going to take for us to make a difference in Marion, make a difference in, 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 in our families, in our communities. Spend time with Christ. Spend time with the Lord. You know, your, your, your phones these days, and mine, mine, will, mine will like ding, 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 all kinds of notifications for everything. Notifications, and I'm like, man, this is this is distracting. So I have to put my phone in a different place, or I have to put it on air, airplane mode, so I can spend undistracted time with Christ, with Jesus. Okay, Jesus wants to show Himself alive to you and through you. Now, now let me ask you this: Let's 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 stand together today. Let's stand together. God bless you. Thank you for for putting up with me today. God bless you. Lord bless you. The Lord touch you. God help us here. But um, as your pastor, and I, I pray about this. I contemplate this. I think about this a lot. You are always on my heart. I know you. I know where you are in your relationship with the Lord. I love you. I do. As your pastor, as your under shepherd, tell me, what can I do? more to help you in your spiritual walk with God what can I do more you, you don't know how many people I have reached out to this past week 
to come to church today and they're not here. None of them are here. I, have, I reach out, I reach out, I talk, I try to encourage. Be faithful, come to the house of the Lord, hear the word, come in fellowship, this is gonna help you. This is what you need, this is what you need, this is what you need. And, and Mary in Ohio, man, something's wrong with it. Something's wrong with this world for sure. 5,000 got saved when Peter preached. What, what can I do as, as your pastor to help you grow? What can I do? What, what can I do to encourage you in your faith? I want to know. What, what can I do as your pastor? What can I do to cause you to have a greater appetite for God? can I do to help us to be more committed and faithful? Tell me how I can help you. I'll do the best I can. How, tell me how to help you to, to have hunger pains for God, for His presence. Tell me how I can help you to, to hunger for the revival. What can I do to encourage you in your, your relationship and your prayer life? What can I do to help you to have a greater faith in God. Because I want to help. I think, Lord, in this little church, we have Sunday morning, Sunday night services. We have Wednesday night services. We have children's services. We have Sunday school. We have women's Bible study, men's Bible studies. We have prayer meetings. Tuesday nights just to try to help us encourage us what can I do no 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 no. I, I don't want this to be condemning I truly want to help you but I, I just wonder what kind of people are we now we got what, what are we are, are we the Marys that are hungry and, and want to sit at the feet of Jesus and spend time with God and, and, to, and to learn and to grow and develop or are we the Marthas that are near Jesus, yet far from him? Which, which are we? Which are we? God, the Holy Ghost, deal with us. Oh, God, hallelujah. Change me. I know I need to be changed. I know it. I know that, that uh, I'm a work in progress. I know that. We all are. Hallelujah. <laughs> what God started, he's faithful to complete. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6, what God has started, God is faithful to complete. Let him do it. God, let your word dwell in me richly. In other words, Jesus, here's the fridge. There, there's there's the, the cupboards and the cabinet, the food and the pantry. Here's the remote control. Here, here, here's the keys to the house. Here's everything, Lord. And God, just, just make yourself at home. Just make yourself at home. How many are willing to do that? Praise God. I'm just going to, what am I going to do today? I just, I just, if you want to, if you have time, you're invited to come to this altar. You're invited to come and, and just pray and to draw close to God and to let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Deal with our hearts, God, according to the word. However, Lord, draw me. Am I Mary or am I Martha? What am I? What kind of, what am I? Hallelujah. Am I on the milk or do I want the meat of the word? Do I want the deeper things of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Come, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Maybe I've been in church all my life. That's okay. That's okay. If, if God, the Holy Ghost, is speaking to you, if He's dealing with you, that's a good sign that you're His. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want to help you. 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 Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. He is so good. He's so faithful. He's so loving. He's so trusting. Jesus, here's the keys to the house. Make yourself at home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Glory. Lord, I give my all to Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In my personal walk with Jesus. 
I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want that appetite for God. For the Lord. For God. For Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can make you. Nobody can force you. It's just Jesus. It's the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost that's drawing us to Him. Praise God. Have your way, Spirit of God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I surrender my all. I give my all to you. Oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I surrender all. I surrender all. Help my brother God. Strengthen him every day in his life, in his walk with you, in his relationship, because you love him so, Lord God. Hallelujah. Touch him, bless him, strengthen him. Come upon him by your power, by the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord. Oh God, there'd be like fire shut up in his bones. The Spirit of God blazing within him. Oh Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Touch us, help us. Oh God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh God, you're so good. Here I am, Lord. Have your way. Make yourself at home. Do what you so desire. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord that you would touch my sister by your power. The Holy Ghost, I pray. Have your way, Lord. Move mightily in our hearts, God. A greater hunger and appetite. The deeper things of God. This is what I desire. This is what I want. Hallelujah. Because I know this is the will of God. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God. Lord, I'm Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. I want more of you, more of your presence, more of your word. The deeper things of the Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no limit as to what God can do. There's no limit. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. We love you, Father. We want to be hot. We want to be on fire for God. Jesus, touch my sister. Oh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. We cry out to you. We cry out to you. We cry out to the living God. We want Jesus. We want the Lord. We hunger for righteousness. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Touch us, Lord. God, touch us, God. I want that appetite and that craving for the Lord. Jesus, I want God. I want the Lord. I want his presence. I want him. I don't want to be religious. I don't want to be just a churchgoer. Oh, Lord, I want to meet Jesus. I want to meet Jesus. I want to meet Jesus. They knew that they had been with Jesus. They knew. They knew. They knew. They knew. Hallelujah. They had been with the Lord. They knew that. They knew that. There was a difference. There was a difference. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to know you. I want to know Christ. I want to know Jesus. Not religion. I want to know Jesus. I want to know God. In the name of the Lord. They knew they had been with Jesus. They knew it. They knew it. They knew it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You don't have to say a word. People will know the difference. They'll know that something is different about you, that you have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Touch us, Lord. We want to be where Jesus is. We want to be in your presence. In the name of the Lord, we want to know you. We want to know you more. We want the deeper things of God. We want to grow. We want to develop. We want to change. We want to be more like Christ. Have your way, God. Lord, make yourself at home in my life. Make yourself at home, Lord. 
Make yourself at home, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let him do it. Just let him take over. Let him do it. Let him take the wheel. Let him do it. Just let him take over. Let him take the wheel. Let him do what he wants. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Oh, God. You're in a life-changing business. You're in a life-changing business. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, I pray. Oh, God, my God. Jesus. Jesus. You're touched, Lord. Draw us. We want to be a Mary. At the feet. Jesus himself. No better one to learn but from Jesus. Let him do it. Just let him do it. Learn of him. Spend time with him. Spend time in his presence. Time crying out to him. Time in prayer. Just time with Christ alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory, glory. and develop I want listen Mary in Ohio I want them to know there's something different about word of life these people are word of life they're different they're not just sing three songs that's it 20 minute message it's not like that they, they got something there they, 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 they connected to heaven they connected to God these people oh I know what it is they have been with Jesus they've been with Jesus the world know it. We're not going to be hypocrites. We're not going to fake it. We're not going to be phony. Just spend time, time with the Lord, with God. You know, between my rounds, believe me, I'm not just twiddling my thumbs trying to find something to do. But, and my wife knows this, I spend a lot of time alone a lot of time alone. But, but I'm not alone, But because really I'm spending a lot of time with, with Jesus. And, and, and sometimes I'm, sometimes it's just in prayer, and I'm crying out to God, and, and people probably down the street can hear me praying. I mean, I'm just, I'm boldly coming before the throne of God. There are times I'm just really quiet, and I just sit here on this platform, on this step, and I just wait upon the Lord. And my meditation is upon Him. That's being with Jesus. Sometimes I'm just I'm just in my office and I'm sitting in the chair and I'm just I have my Bible open and I'm just reading and meditating and thinking and pondering. That's being with Jesus. When we come together as a body of Christ and we worship the Lord, the Bible says we're two or three are gathered in his name. He is in the midst of them. That's being with Jesus. Do you not believe that God is here today? I believe he's here. Do you not believe that God is helping us? I believe God is helping us. Do you not sense the presence of the Lord? I sense the presence of the Lord. Do you feel the unction of God? I feel the unction of God. The Lord is present. And he says to this church, I want to sup with you. These disciples learned how to preach, how to proclaim, how to pray. These And how to live the Christian life because they stuck with Jesus for three and a half years. And now Jesus is doing it through them. That's powerful. That's powerful. Man, hallelujah. Let's be a praying church. Somebody out there sick, you lay hands on them and you pray in the name of Jesus. They might be all bug-eyed. Like, Man, what's this all about? You're not ashamed. You pray for them. Just like that lame man, they ain't called beautiful. You just pray. I don't have any money, but I do have this. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Peter picks him up because he saw Jesus do that. Glory to God. Now, this is the first part. I've got some other parts and points I need to bring out to you, but nonetheless, it's a start. And I'm telling you, I, I just, I, there, there, God, there, there's just no telling what God can do. I'm telling you that it's, it's beyond our thinking, our comprehension of what the Lord can do in His people and through His people. It, it, it 
Lord is wonderful and he is powerful and he is glorious. And, uh, and I, I just, I don't know about you, but I just, I come expecting for God to save and to heal, to deliver, to pour out his spirit, to bring revival, for God to work, not only to, Lord, to move through his church, but God would take his church to move through the world and to change the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a mess, folks, I know. The world's a mess. Right now, my world is, is here in this area, and I tell you, it is a mess. It is a mess. It's a mess. And uh, there are times I, I, you just want to throw your hands up and say, forget it. <laughs> it's just so hard. But I just know that Jesus would be walking down these streets looking for an opportunity to minister to somebody. I just know that. And I feel like that's what we need to do also. It's part of what we do at PB&J. It's part of what we do trying to reach all these kids and their families and their homes. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the Lord, good church. Amen. So, I don't want to be near Jesus and yet so far away from him. I want to be near him and learn of him. Let's stand together, please. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We worship you. Can we just worship for the Lord, to the Lord just for a moment here? Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name, Jesus. We magnify you. We lift up the name of the Lord. We glorify the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Almighty God, how we worship you. How we praise you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glorify the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. and your ways and your word and you're going to reveal these things to them and you're going to be you're going to be used by God I know that Lord I pray in the name of the Lord that they be strengthened that the church be edified that the church be hungry that the church be thirsty that the church simply wants you wants Christ hallelujah so Lord do this 
Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless them in their homes. Bless them in their families. Bless their children. Bless their marriages. Help them, Father, on the job. Help them, Father, in their finances. Help them in every area of their life, God. Help them in their marriages. Help them in their church. Help them in their ministries. Help them in every way, Father. Lead them, guide them, direct their steps. Give them wisdom. Lord, Father, I pray your blessing, your touch, your anointing upon their lives. God, there's going to be just a great, great drawing of your spirit. We're going to hunger for the Lord, and we're going to want the deeper things of God. I know it. I thank you, Father. There's, gonna, there's a change in my life. There's a change in me. God's doing it. God's changing me. The Holy Ghost is sanctifying me. He's, sh he's teaching me. He's showing me. He's doing it. Hallelujah. Because Jesus, you can make yourself at home. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, we give you all the praise today. We love you, Lord. And we glorify Christ. And we just ask this today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, tonight um, we're going to have a welcome back fellowship for Morgan. And uh, really want you to uh, bring uh, all kinds of food, a bottle of pop. And uh, let's come tonight rejoicing. We're going to have a time of worship here in the sanctuary. And, uh, and then a time of fellowship. So please come tonight. But God bless you. And please love people and share fellowship and shake hands and hug necks and say, I appreciate you and I'm so glad you're here. It's so important. God bless you. Reach out to people. Don't, don't, don't wait for them to reach out to you. You just go to them. You just take off and go to them and reach out to them. And praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, church. God bless you. I hope to see you back tonight. Hallelujah.